He's on to us. Uh, do you know something on the bus? Yeah, I don't know what it is. Just something, some feeling. Middle-aged intuition. Yeah. Can be very useful. Has he gone in? Yeah, he must have done. I'll cover the other side. Or I'll watch it. Remember, he's good. Or I might end up like Karras. Right. Broken spine can be very nasty. Thank you for telling me. Don't mention it.
You were outside on the platform. Oh, just before. Before? Come out of here, the waiting room. See, into this I was. So you weren't on the platform when it actually happened? Sorry? Tom's a mic deaf, sir. You weren't on the platform when it happened? Oh, I might have been, just. But I didn't see nothing. Nothing at all? Sorry, no. Not until after... afterwards. You know, just check your name again, Thomas. Uh, oh, for them. Right. Horrible business. Yeah, with an N. That's right, sir. Thanks. Best sir, if we get her back to Dunsley, away from here, she wants to help. Oh, it's getting damn cold here. I think you're right. I wonder, sir, if you would mind coming along with us. What to Dunsley? Just a mile from here, sir. Could you check what's happening about the driver? If he's not too bad, I'd like him along. Right. Well, I'd like to get your statement tonight, Mr. Uh... Callum. Oh yes. You, uh, you live in London? Yes. And when are you planning to go back? Well, just before this happened. Tonight? Yes. By train? Uh, no car. I, I left it in, uh, in Reading. And, uh, came by train over here? Oh, no, no, no bus. Well, you know, I'm, uh, I'm not travelling on a bus every now and then. See, I spend most of my time in cars. And you get fed up with cars. Bus every now and then, well, it's relaxing, you know. Are uh, you a rep, sir, a traveller? They get a lot of reps down this way. Push up some mileage. 30,000 a year, some of them. Oh, that's a lot. That's a lot of miles. Well, if you wouldn't mind, Mr. Callan, it shouldn't take too long, and then I'll get a car laid on to run you back to Reading straight away. Oh, right, thank you. It was all so sudden, you know. I mean, one minute I know, was there, sir, it then... takes some time for it to register. I could dream at first. Yeah. He's waiting in the car. Shall we go, then? I'd like to see you both again tomorrow. Right now. Oh, both business. Yeah, we're on late again tomorrow. Sir. Your husband, Mrs. Kent, he'll meet us. Won't keep you longer than I have to, Mrs. Kelly. Pushed him. Pushed him. Straight in front. Why so late? It's nearly midnight. Yeah, we, we, what? I, I can we, hardly hear you. Sound of drunk or demented? Yeah, we've uh, had some trouble. We've lost Palanca, sir. What? Repeat that. We've lost Palanca. Then I suggest you return immediately. Now perhaps you appreciate just how dangerous Palanca is. I'll be back first thing in the morning. Sir. Now, Cross. Not tomorrow. Now. Well, what about Callan? He's still here. He can take care of himself. The old boy passed you. Yeah, well, he was, he was carrying a bucket of ashes. How long before? Oh, be about 30 seconds. And he was walking the other way? Back to the train, yes. Was there anyone else around? Around? On either platform? Oh, well, there was the woman. No, yeah. no, no, I meant anyone else. Oh, well, the other porter, he was in his little room, he was making tea. You noticed that? Well, the door was open. I see. I mean, the, the, the dead man, I mean, I didn't even know he was there. You no, didn't notice him at all? No, no, I mean, he... He just ran out from behind this trolley. Ran out? As the train was coming. He ran out deliberately. It looks like it. This is very important, Mr. Callan. Yeah, Did I, he I run know, out? I, I, I know it's important, but I mean, after all, he's dead. I, I, I'm I quite aware the man is dead, Mr. Callan. I've got to try and find out how and why. All right, I'm trying to help you. You ask me to help, I'm trying to help. I realise you've had a nasty shock. Very few people ever experience violent deaths. I don't know how lucky they are. A young man... Polish, slim, colour of hair not known, possibly wearing belted suede jacket. Mean anything to you? Oh, I should it. I'm sorry, no. Uh, this is a description from Mrs. Kent. Where was he? Of a man on the other platform. Mrs. Kent was the woman. 
Well, I mean, I must be either deaf or blind or both. You saw no other person whatsoever? No, no, only the man, and I only saw him for... Well, how long does it take to throw yourself under a train? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm jumping to conclusions. That's your job. Oh, no, thank God, Mr. Lorimer's. Oh, is he your superior? A coroner. A coroner? Well, does that mean that I'm I I'm afraid would... so, Mr. Callum. This is only a preliminary questioning. Violent, unnatural deaths immediately fall under the jurisdiction of the coroner. There's bound to be an inquest. Oh, when? Oh, it depends. Well, on what? Oh, well, they let you know in good time, sir. You'll be a principal witness. And Mrs. Kent? I should think so. Yeah, well, she was there. I mean, she saw... Well, I'm she afraid saw it isn't did. as simple as that, Mr. Kent. What about the train driver? Uh, he saw the man just for a moment. A white face, a blur in the train lights. Ah, oh, well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, it was dark, you see. I mean, that, perhaps that's why this man chose to... Candidly, Mr. Callan, you think this man took his own life? Well, he ran from behind the trolley. Yes, that's more or less what the driver said. Well, what did Mrs. Kent say? This description that I read you? Yes. Mrs. Kent is convinced that a man of that approximate build, age, appearance, deliberately pushed the man. She insists that the man was murdered. Surprise cock-up, isn't it? We still don't know what Palanka was doing in Reading in the first place. No, it's all damned inconvenient. This Palanka business is becoming complicated, messy. What do you make of Cross's report? Oh, it's very nice. It's very departmental, isn't it, sir? What the hell was I doing in the police station all night long? This woman, in your estimation, what did she see? She saw enough of Cross to have a good working description. Age, height, build, dress. Enough. And the incident? No, no, only the climax. A Freudian slip, Callum. Do you what? Your choice of word. She saw the victim, sir. Accident, Callum. Victim has certain connotations. She was very shaken, sir. Yeah, it was perfectly natural in the circumstances. She was sick. Well, that sort of detail we can dispense with. Two hours later, she was still white and shaken. Good. You'll excuse me saying, sir, you are a bastard, oh, sir. Put down your banner, Callan. She was in a state of near hysteria, right? Shaking, crying, being ill. She was vomiting, sir. Then her account of what she saw, or rather what she thought she saw, particularly the implication of homicide, must become suspect. Maybe. And from what you said about your own answers... Lies. Explanation. You should have seen me. It was a great performance. I really missed my vacation. Simple but clear reconstruction of the incident with certain changes of cast, of course. Yes, if Cross if, hadn't if, let... If, if. If. What a lovely word that is, isn't it? If. If that poor sod had stayed at home. If Palanca had gone to Birmingham instead of Reading. If you'd let me handle this on my own as I asked you to. If Cross had never been born. Cross if... feels as badly about it as you do. Does he really, sir? I wonder. What's that supposed to mean? Well, from reading his report, then listening to you, it would seem that this incident... That really is a very nasty little word, isn't it? It seems as though this incident has already been filed under miscellaneous. You're not being very discreet, Oh, don't Alan. you worry, sir! I was the soul of discretion earlier on, pouring out my perjury. Hmm. Uh, this CID man, he believed you? He believed me more than he believed Mrs. Kent, yes. And the driver corroborated your story. The train driver didn't even see Cross. Again, what we want, right? Yes. Talk of the devil, where is Cross? Palanka slipped in. Yeah, I gathered that. <sighs> horrible, horrible, it was horrible. <laughs> what? No, it's just some old geezer porter. Deaf as a door he was, all he kept saying was horrible business, horrible. Christ, he was right. A chance of a cup of coffee, sir? No. You know, the range and complexity of Mr. Palanca's oh, activities are only just beginning to percolate down from the senior gentleman. <clears throat> Intimidation, abduction, at least four killings. You know about Carras? Yes. We were careless there. If Palanca isn't dealt with them soon, they're going to be a lot of one-way tickets to Prague. Go home or die, eh? Crude, but effective. I'm going to use Carras. 
Polanka thinks he's dead. Oh, then he's in for a surprise that should bruise his Eastern European ego. Tiger and the goat, eh? Mm, poetic, Callan. Does Karas know that he's going to be crippled bait? Yes. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, well, Planka really slipped up there, didn't he? Yes, well, let's hope his professional pride gets the better of his discretion. It could work. It's got to work. How good is Palanka? He's good. That's why I want you with Cross. And what about the inquest, sir? Oh, yes. The inquest. Civilní odvaha je druh hrdinství, který se projevuje u lidí, jakmile se odstnou tváří v tvář. Please. Oh, that's you. Come in, Mr. Callan. Hello. Good evening, Mr. Callan. Evening, Mr. Cross. Otto! It's Mr. Callan. Good evening, Mr. Callan. Mr. Callan. Uh, Mr. Callan, can I have a, a word with you, please? Yes. Will you excuse us? Yes, of course. Oh, sure. We can continue. Mr. Callan, you're welcome. Look, uh, about last night. Yeah, Hunter showed me your report. Yeah, who was he? I don't know. It's marvellous. I don't even know his name. Oh, perhaps it's better that way, less, less personal. Filed away under miscellaneous, eh? But what do you mean by that? Never mind, son, you wouldn't understand anyway. Well, why did you stay there, anyway? There was a witness. What? A woman. I had to cover for you. Did she see me? Hunter, I'll fill you in tomorrow. Yeah, I nearly had Palanka. That stupid man hadn't got him away. What do we do now? We wait for Palanka. You think he'll come here? Yeah, he'll come here. Always so sure, Mr. Callan. That's right. Why? Because he's young and arrogant. He's got something to prove, just like you, James. It was an accident. No, 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 you've got to get it right, son. It was an incident. I'll tell you what. When I find out who he was, I'll let you know who you incidentally killed. All right? Is that you, Lonely? Mr. Callan? You haven't thought it in? There's a one-man wake. Oh, no. No, I don't like the sound of that. That's morbid, that is. There's a glass over there. What? Glass. Oh, God. Yeah. That's enough. Well, um... Cheers, And, uh, how's things there, Mr. Callan? Things are things are things, lovely. Oh, dear, oh, dear. And, uh, and, and, and was he a friend of yours? Oh. Whoever it is, it's not anymore, like. I don't know. Didn't even know his name, did I? Well, then. Well, then. Maybe you're right. You, um... 
Do you want me to tell me, Mr. Callan? You're perceptive, do you know that? That's what you are, mate. Definitely perceptive. A foreigner. That's right. Yeah, I can always tell you now. It's the eyes. Something about set the eyes. Oh, Polak. You know, enough. He's Czech. It's the same thing. You'll find a, an address, telephone number on the back. You doing anything next few days? Well, I mean, that depends, Mr. Callan. I was thinking of going fishing. Fishing? Or you? It's my hobby. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was a nasty shock, that was. Oh, this is just a, you know, eyes and ears job, a little bit of observation. Who, this geezer? Yeah. He's going to be at that address on the back sometime soon. I want to know when to expect a visit so I can bake a cake. Yeah, but Mr. Callum, won't your friend... No, there's no trouble, right? No bother, no fuss, one phone call, that's all. You spot him, you phone in, then you scarp him, right? Yeah. And he's a nightingale. Yeah, he loves the dark. Yeah, I can always tell. It's the eyes. <laughs> oh, what is it? Bloody fishing! <laughs> You're doing days? Yeah, Callum prefers nights, thank goodness. Who's there now? Farrow Martin. I said it'd be an hour. Any hint to Polenka? One false alarm. How did Carlos take it? He laughed. Good. Has Callum said any more about that Reading business? No, no, sir. He hasn't mentioned it, but, uh... I hate hesitant answers. Anything to say, say it, but what? He seems preoccupied, sir. Yes, you're damn right. It's worrying. When is the inquest? We haven't heard. There's nothing to stop the coroner holding it any time. Well, are you involved, then? The most important single thing about this section cross is its anonymity. That must be preserved at all costs. I'm only praying that Callan doesn't get temperamental. From the look on his face, the pain's bad. An attack of conscience. Mm, if he can get through the inquest without involving the department, I don't want to use pressure. Fewer people who know about this, the better. Was there... was there anything in the papers? Oh, a couple of paragraphs in the national late editions, a small feature, a picture of the wife and children in the local paper. And the woman's story, was that mentioned? Apparently she's had a nervous collapse. Well, then. Can't see what Callan's brooding about. It can't be anything but an open and shut suicide. Sometimes, James, you delight me. Sir? So young. So insensible. Getting very late. I'm not tired. A bit of tea, Mr. Kalan. Thank you. Please, sit down. And you must have this cake. Thanks. Darling? No. Stop working, please. No, I Oh. How's the, uh, the book coming? Oh, slowly, Mr. Carl, very slowly. Obituary is always painful. And the testament to the death of one's own country, one's own culture, even more so. Darling, Mr. Carl doesn't want to hear about such things. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, no, 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 please. I haven't got long to live. Oh, darling. Please. Even if you stop, Palanka. But I have to finish this book. That's all that's important. The rape of Czechoslovakia mustn't be forgotten. Not like Hungary was. It marks a crucial moment in history. <laughs> a great pirate retreating from humanity, plunging towards irrationality, fear, prejudice, and gangsterism. <laughs> Forgive me. This is the beginning of the end of the Soviet system. This contains a passionate indictment by over 30 internationally respected Czech communists, now in exile. More than a book, Mr. Curran. A political bomb. <laughs> I'm going to dedicate it to Palanka, a living proof of the degeneracy of what, to me, 
might have been Utopia. Yeah, well, I mean, every country has its palancas, you know, every government. A necessary evil, perhaps. Well, I suppose that's what they tell themselves. Perhaps we're right. I'm not a naive man, Mr. Curran. I've travelled extensively. I've seen many countries. I'm quite aware of the veneer of democracy in some of them, and to a certain extent, even in your own country, you know, the power of the central government, the passion for secrecy, for security, which um, perhaps uh, now and then demands uh, uh, expedient and anonymous death. Very goodness. Oh, you can have another cake, uh, no. please. No more. Thank you. You're a lonely man, Mr. Cullen. Yours is a difficult occupation. Sometimes a very unhappy one. It has its moments. He just got up. Oh, I'm sorry, but I'd have called later. Only I've only got one day in London. Back again this evening. Well, won't you sit down? I'll just finish up. Late night? Sure, of, yeah. I've got a few more questions, Mr. Cullen. Well, you've got my telephone number. Why don't you call me? You can't interrogate on the telephone. Interrogate? Just a few points to clear away. Oh, they must be important. I think so. You find out who he was, what's his name? It was in the papers. Yeah, well, I'll never read the papers. It's too depressing, isn't it? Ireland, Thomas Ireland. Married, three kids. That's an unusual name. And so is Callan. They even sound a bit alike. <laughs> well, a bit. What can I do for you? What were you doing in Reading? Visiting. Who? Does it matter? Perhaps. A friend. Just a friend. Just a friend, yeah. Could I have his name and address, please? No. Any reason? Well, there are several reasons, yeah. It's a routine question? Yeah, well... Not quite a routine answer, was it? Your privilege, Mr. Carroll. Yes. Anyway, you said it was a man. Do excuse me, much. Mrs. Kent's story worried me. Yeah, it worried me a bit. I've got a statement from a bus conductor. A man answering the description she gave got on his bus at Felton, got off at the station about a couple of minutes before the train. Well, that's funny. I was on that bus, too. I didn't see anybody. Oh, that's odd. The conductor swears he got onto the same stop as you. Well, he must be very observant. He is. He even remembers the other passengers at that stop. A young bloke in a flying jacket. Boy saying goodbye to his girl. Another man jumped on the bus just as it was pulling away. You got on first. Do you say how many fillings I had? Do you still deny any knowledge of this man? Let me get something straight, please. I don't deny anything, all right? I saw a man fall under a train. I didn't see anybody hit him or bash him. I didn't see anybody get on a bus or off a bus. Fall? Oh, you said ran. Threw himself when we first met. I saw no other man. I found this 
Oh, was that Mr. Rollins? I'm glad you remember his name. On the platform, under the trolley, several feet away from the edge of the so, platform. So, he smoked a pipe, sir. Doesn't it seem strange to you, Mr. Callan, that a man contemplating suicide should be smoking a freshly packed pipe? Well, no, I mean, you know, what about these women you hear about? I mean, they, they go and have their hair specially done, come straight home, put their head in the gas oven. I mean, you know. All right, question two. If he ran and threw himself in front of the train, why didn't we find the summer on the track like the rest of you? I don't know. I really, I, I don't no, know. Let me put it another way. If he was pushed, he wasn't. Can you bear with me, please? If he was pushed, a pipe might easily have slipped from his mouth. I didn't see any other man. I just saw Arlen, and then not till after it happened. Mrs. Kent has been quite ill. I'm sorry to hear that. We will ask the coroner to postpone the inquest until she has recovered sufficiently to appear. Oh, yeah. Well, how long do you think that'll be? Well, soon, quite soon, Mr. Kent. Are you certain you didn't see this man? Sherlock Holmes bus conductor and a conscientious policeman. That's all we needed. Look, any good copper is always going to follow up information received, however improbable. Kyle's obviously a good copper. He's on his way back to Reading? He said this evening. I didn't want the department involved. Blimey, the department is involved, right up to its pale blue neck. Listen, what did you expect? That nobody was going to follow up Mrs. Kyle's statement? Look, when's it going to get through to you, sir? I am in dead trouble. It was an accident. Look, we've killed an innocent man. Now, why don't you go down to the coroner? You tell him. And while you're at it, why don't you tell the widow and the kids, eh? We're awfully sorry, you see, we were after this other fella. You've been around long enough to know that this section can function as it does, primarily because few people know we exist. I do not intend to widen that social circle. They're trained to treat people like numbers, like ciphers. Dispensable, indispensable, white file, blue file, red file, That's yellow file. That's the only way we can work. All in the public interest. In the end, yes. Well, what about my bloody interest? Listen, mate, if I go down there to that coroner I get copped for perjury, are you going to help me? Not on your Nelly. I tell you, we're all, we're all numbers. We're all bloody zombies. You're the best man in this section, Callum. Oh. Probably the best it's ever had. But for one thing, you became deactivated because of over-involvement. Because sometimes I showed a normal amount of human emotion, sir. Exactly. Oh, stuff it. All right, what do we do? Put me through to Chief Superintendent Rutherford, uh, Special Branch, Reading. This is priorities. Hurry it along. That's gag job, eh? In the interests of national security. Oh, naturally, naturally. If it ever leaked out that we invoked a top security restraint in this case, it would lead to a press orgy, public inquiry, even the Boy Scouts in Whitehall would have a field day. What about me and the coroner? You're on your own there, Callan. You're too right I am. If we as much as approach the coroner, it could be very dangerous, and I don't intend to take that degree of risk. So I'm on my own. It's the only way. Right, sir. Then I think I should warn you that perjury is not my speciality. Brotherhood, Hunter, you have a CID officer, Kyle. Inspector Kyle. Jumping Jude! Hack! Go on. supposed to be an atheist. No, no, not me, Mr. Callan. No, um, I mean, I, I've read a lot of books. Oh, he keeps a lovely table. Yeah, I can see that. You're a regular library leech, aren't you? Oh, my, I don't know about that. It sounded urgent. And my note. 
Yeah. What else? I've phoned you twice before. So I'm here. Yeah. Well, it's a little bit embarrassing. You want me to turn round? No. I'm being serious with you, Mr. Callan. Look, I've been watching that gaff for six nights now. No sign? No, no sign at all. That's just it. Oh, you're just gonna laugh. Why don't you try me? Well, look. No sign. I haven't seen him, but he's there. I know he's there, cos I've got a feeling. Yeah. It's all this high flown literature you keep reading. Mr. Callan, I'm being deadly serious with you. I'm telling you, that bloke said I know it. And I'm warning you. Watch yourself with this one. I've got the feeling. Yeah, right, right. You think you stick it out for another week? Yeah, well, I mean, if, if you think it's worth it. So. Oh, man. Now, don't you eat that. Eh? Huh. Hmm. I'll give you up, burn. Yes? Mr. Callan. My name is Leach. Copley and Leach, Reading. Mrs. Arlen, solicitors. Can you prove it? Yeah, just a moment. For you. Thank you. Cross? Hunter. Anything happened? No, no, sir, nothing. I'm beginning to wonder if he's in London at all. Mrs. Arlen can't accept for a moment that her husband would ever have taken his own life. I've known him for 20 years. Can't believe it's remotely possible. You're sure you weren't mistaken? <laughs> Apparently it was very dark. Sure that he wasn't ill or slipped or something? I merely told the police what I saw. Must have happened very quickly. Look, I'm sorry. I don't like it any more than you do, but there it is. Mr. Cullen, I I'll be quite honest with you. Perhaps I shouldn't be here at all just before the inquest. Quite. But we have a problem. Mr. Arlen was well insured, but it was an old policy and there was a very severe self-destruction clause. What does that mean? Well, if the coroner's court bring in a suicide verdict, it's more than possible. The insurance company won't be legally justified in denying Mrs. Arlen's claim. In other words, no money? Certainly not full entitlement. Which is? About 8,000. 8,000 pounds? Are you out of your mind, Callum? Well, of course, there is an alternative, sir. Which is? I could go to the inquest and blow the whole issue wide open. You could, but you won't. Look, sir. With, with Mrs. Kent confused and Kyle gagged, the jury might easily bring in a verdict of suicide. Precisely. Well, look, don't you care? Don't you think we owe her something? I mean, how much is one dead husband worth anyway? I couldn't get that amount of money without a lot of questions being asked to which I do not have answers. Oh, my God. Now, Shh. don't do anything we all might regret later, Callan. Court will rise for a Majesty's coroner. Please be seated. Jury remain standing. All manner of persons who have anything to do at this court before the Queen's coroner for this county, draw near and give your attendance. And you good men of the jury who have been summoned here this day to inquire for our Sovereign Majesty the Queen when, where and by what means a man said to be Mr. Thomas William Arlen came to his death. Answer your names as you shall be called. Each man at the first call.
It's only me, darling. I swear by Almighty God that the evidence I shall give at this inquest will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Prosím tě, přinesla jsi mi palanka. I thought when I first went onto the platform, but it, it, it was very dark and, well, I, I can't be sure, but I thought that Constable. I... Constable. Have you ever seen that man before? No, sir. Think very no. carefully, Mrs. Kent. Well, he looks just like everyone else. I... No. I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Take your time. We've all day, if necessary. And we all appreciate how very disturbing this experience has been for you, Mrs. Kent. Uh, you gave Inspector Kyle a quite reasonable description of a man. Yes, I know, I did. But, well, I was very tired at the time, and maybe... maybe Are I you now that... saying that you didn't see this man? Well, I, I don't know. What I mean is, I, I can't be... <coughs> I can't be positive, you see it. Well, I'd only just come onto the platform, and it, it was very dark, and I was very tired. And, well, it wasn't as though I was really looking, you see, and it all happened so fast Mrs. That... Kent, uh, I'm sorry to have to continue questioning you, but this is very important. I want the jury to be quite clear about certain aspects of your original statement to Inspector Kyle, since they conflict in no small degree with subsequent statements taken by officers of my court. Gentlemen, I am in no way suggesting that Mrs. Kent has at any time deliberately submitted false testimony. I'm merely offering the suggestion that because her statement concerning the possible homicide of the deceased was taken immediately after she's witnessed a most tragic and horrific death, and since the police have been unable to establish any evidence as to the reality of such a person, this statement must be considered less than substantive. Dejte si pozor. Don't speak Czech to me. Speak English, if you want. Get this gun. Stand up slowly. The gun at arm's length. Now backwards over here. Backwards! Exactly as he says. I swear by Almighty God that the evidence I shall give at this inquest will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. You are David Callan of 27 Branscombe Terrace, Fulham, and you are a dealer in scrap metal. Yes. A book? No! Oh, don't harm her, Palanca. Kill me if you must, but not her. She's done no wrong. What delicate handwriting. Will you indicate exactly where you are standing, Mr. Callum? Um, well, uh, there. Well, no, no, further up there. Again, please. Well, it was some, some You were there. far more explicit with Inspector Kyle. Yeah, but it, it does look a bit different on the plan, sir. Can you tell the jury exactly what you saw that night? Uh... Yeah, well, um... We're waiting, Mr. Callum? Yes. 
Well, it was, it was very uh, cold, and I, I went into the waiting room. And there was nobody there. Well, there was the, the porter was there. He was stoking up the fire. I don't think he Just saw me. Just the pertinent facts. Well, it was very dark, um, and there was a trolley loaded up, just waiting. Right. The rest of the manuscript. No. The rest? You're an animal, Anka. A disgusting, predatory animal. <laughs> and you, Garas, are a traitor to yourself, your wife, your family, and worst of all, to your country. Never. You like it. No. <laughs> Others will be written. You can't bear them all. Are you now retracting the statement you made to Inspector Kyle? Well, no, not, not exactly. Well, what exactly are you saying? Well, I mean, you see, I've, I've had time to think about it. What do you mean? I mean, you know, it, 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 it was dark. It plays tricks with your eyes, you know, shadows. Mr. Callan, I would remind you that you're under oath. I know. You seem to be treating this matter with an alarming irresponsibility. Well, I'm only answering your questions. That tone of voice I don't care for. None. then. Straight answers to direct questions. As you can see, the jury is becoming increasingly confused by your ambiguity. You saw no one answering the description that Mrs. Kent gave to Inspector Kyle. No, no, no one, no, no. At least you seem certain of something. You were not aware that the deceased was on the platform until the train approached. No, I told you, it was, it, was, it was dark, you know, I mean, you, you, you couldn't see When the train did approach, in your original statement, you said, he just ran out from behind the trolley. Was that so? No, he, he, he came out. Did he run? Well, he, he, he stepped out. Be more explicit. He, he walked out. Why, then, did you state run? And further on, how long does it take to throw yourself under a train? Well, you see, I was excited. Excited? Well, no, 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 not exactly excited. You see, but it all happened so quickly. You heard the doctor who carried out the post-mortem. No evidence of internal disease, no alcohol present in the blood. Yes. This rules out the possibility that the deceased was either ill or drunk. We are left with only two remaining possibilities. The deceased died as the result of an inexplicable accident, or he took his own life. You follow? Oh, yes, yes. Your statement to Inspector Kyle undeniably supports the latter conclusion. Suicide, Mr. Callan. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure now. May I ask what has brought about this disturbing reversal of opinion? Well, I mean, I've told you, see, I've, I've had more time to think. I sometimes wish this was a court of issue, which would allow me to treat certain witnesses as hostile. We'd best return to simple question and answer. Did you see the deceased slip or stumble accidentally in any way before he fell in front of the train? He, he, he Did he up. slip or stumble, yes or no? You know, you couldn't be sure. I mean, Did the deceased seem to deliberately throw himself under the train? I don't know. You'll have to do better than that. Well, it was, it was difficult to see. I mean, you know, you, you couldn't tell. Well, I couldn't. Well, not really, well look, could, could you? Had I not been absolutely sure, Mr. Callan, I should not have had the criminal audacity to make the statement you made to the police. I think it was quite misleading. This is a most frustrating case. Stand down. And this...
Your wonderful book. It was dedicated to him. Court will rise. Well, at least it wasn't a suicide verdict. I should get the money. Thank you, Mr. Cullen. Thank you.